Okay, so this is the next video. This is questions 21 to 30 of the uh, November 2017 paper one. So what we've got is the rate expression for the reaction X plus 2Y giving us free Z. Uh, so the rate is K, the rate constant, times uh, X to the power 0, 0 order, and then Y squared, second order with respect to Y. So by which factor will the rate of reaction increase when the concentrations of X and Y are both increased by a factor of 3? So anything to the power 0 is 1, remember. So the fact that the concentration of X goes up by 3 is going to have no effect on the rate because it's 0 order. So X doesn't affect the rate. The reactant, must have, that chemical must appear after the rate determining step. Whereas Y is second order, so uh, if the concentration increases by a factor of 3, that would be 3 squared, so it would become 9 times faster. Okay, so 3 squared would be 9 times faster, so it's going to be this one. Which pair of statements explains the increase in rate of reaction when the temperature is increased or a catalyst is added? Uh, well, increase in temperature, that's going to increase the average kinetic energy of the particles. It won't affect the entropy change of the reaction. That will remain the same. Uh, the activation energy would also remain the same as well, just by increasing temperature. Adding a catalyst, well, that's going to uh, decrease the activation energy. So that's going to be this one here. It certainly won't increase the activation energy. It won't affect the average energy because that's uh, the temperature, basically, is a measure of the average kinetic energy. And once again, it wouldn't actually affect the entropy change delta H itself, just the distance to the top of the hill. So C is the right answer. On to equilibrium, at 700 degrees C, the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction is 1.075 times 10 to the 8. That's quite a big number. There's the uh, reaction, so which relationship is always correct. So it'll help us if we draw the equilibrium law, where Kc is the product, uh, so it'll be hydrogen sulfide squared, because there's two of them, divided by the concentration of the reactant, so that will be hydrogen uh, squared times uh, the concentration of S2. I haven't come across that before. Hmm, and uh, basically then, because Kc is a very large number, that means this number must be bigger than these numbers down here. So looking at this, uh, that implies it the wrong way round. Uh, we need this number to be bigger if this gives a very large case value of Kc. So we're going to go with this one here. Okay, So that's the one. Big number on top, small numbers on the bottom, and that's why we get that big number there. So the equilibrium must lie to the right. Twenty-four. What will happen if the pressure is increased in the following reaction mixture at equilibrium? Uh, so that's going to affect the gases. So we've got one molecule of gas on the left. We've got no molecules of gas on the right. So increasing the pressure will shift it to the side with fewer molecules of gas, which is the right, uh, because there are no molecules of gas on that side. So the equilibrium will shift to the right, shift to the right. Uh, so it's not either of these two. And then uh, the pH will increase or decrease. Well, if it shifts to the right, it's going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. And that's basically the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions, the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. So the pH will decrease. So we want to go with this one. 10 centimetres cubed of an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide of pH 10 is mixed with 990 centimetres cubed of distilled water. What is the pH? Well, remember, a change in concentration of times 10 is a difference of one pH unit. So if we go from 10 centimetres cubed of this alkali and dilute it to effectively a thousand centimeters cubed because 990 times uh, plus 10 is a thousand centimeters cubed that's a hundred fold dilution so that's going to be a change of two pH units 10 times 10 is your hundred of course it's not going to go up it's not going to become more alkaline by diluting it with water the pH is going to go closer to seven so it's going to go down by eight because we've got a hundred sorry down by two to eight as we're doing a 100-fold dilution. So a 10-fold dilution would take it down to pH 9. A further 10-fold dilution going uh, from 100 centimetres cubed to 1,000 will take it to pH 8. Which of the following will form a buffer solution if combined in appropriate molar ratios? Well, HCl and sodium chloride won't do anything. You'll just have a solution of acid at the end of it. Sodium chloride's uh, not an acid or a base. Uh, Sodium hydroxide and sodium ethanoate, well, you've got two bases there. So again, that's not really going to work. You're just going to have so like a basic solution. Ammonium chloride and HCl, here we've got the opposite problem. We've got two acids. We've just got two proton, proton donors. So that's not going to help. What about here? Well, if we add HCl to ammonia, they will react to create ammonium chloride. 
And then, of course, as long as we have an excess of ammonia, we will then end up with a buffer mixture of ammonium chloride plus ammonia. So we'll have a, a nice healthy amount of ammonia uh, plus its uh, conjugate acid, the NH4 plus ion. So this would be our acid and base in our buffer mixture. And as long as we don't have too much HCl, so we get about 50-50 mix, then that would be our buffer system where we've got a good reservoir of both the acid and its conjugate base. Okay. 27, which indicator is appropriate for the acid base titration shown below? So we've got a range of indicators down here. Now, the bottom line is we need uh, an indicator with a pKa value, which kind of comes around about the equivalence point. The equivalence point is around about halfway uh, up that line where we're meeting neutralization. So that's kind of coming in at around about eight and a half or so. So looking at something that comes close to that, well, that's down at 1.5, 3.7, 4.2. They're nowhere near the equivalence point. So we need this one here. Okay, so that's a nice easy way of solving it. They do have a bit of a range around its pKa value. Uh, but like I say, these ones are, are way out because the equivalence point, which is about halfway up the, the sharp drop, uh, what we've got here, of course, is a strong uh, base being neutralized by a weak acid. So that's why the pH doesn't drop uh, particularly far. So yeah, we want phenol failing. Okay. And that would turn from pink to colorless because it's pink in alkali, colorless in acid. Which statement is incorrect for a 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed uh, methanoic acid solution? The pH equals one. Well, if it was a strong acid, yes. So if it was HCl, then basically uh, strong acids fully ionize, and then you'd have 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed of hydrogen ions, which you'd write as one times 10 to the minus one. And of course, that's another way of saying that's one times 10 to the minus pH. So the pH would be one. But that's not correct here, because it's not a strong acid. So it doesn't fully ionize. So most of it will be this stuff still, not H+. plus. Uh, the concentration of the hydrogen ions will be much less than 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. Yes, it will, because it's only a weak acid, so it'll be in equilibrium where it only partially ionizes to give you the methanoate ion plus the hydrogen ions. So that's correct. Uh, the methanoate ion is approximately equal to the H+. plus. Well, yeah, assuming that there's kind of no other acid source present, uh, as this dissociates to give us an equal ratio of methanoate to hydrogen ions, we can assume they're pretty equal, and the methanoic acid is partially ionized. Yes, it's a weak acid, uh, as symbolized by the equilibrium arrow I've drawn there. The equilibrium was probably going to lie very far over this side, uh, so it's only partially ionized. So A is the right answer. It's trying to trick us because it's given us the pH for that concentration, but that concentration of a strong monoprotic acid. 29, which of the following is a redox reaction? Uh, so you might be able to spot these quick and easy. I mean, I'm looking at A already because it's a displacement reaction. And we're going from 0 to plus 2 because it's magnesium 2 plus. And here we're going from plus 3 because it's Al3 plus to 0. So there's a change in oxidation state. So I'm already thinking that one. Okay. Again, other ones which you can identify as not being redox processes are neutralization reactions, such as this one, where we take... Oh, actually, sorry, it's not neutralization, it's a thermal decomposition uh, by the looks of it. So we could work it through. I mean, the sodium's plus one, the hydrogen's plus one, the car oxygen's are minus two. So if there's three of them all together, they must come to uh, minus six. They bring it up as far as uh, minus four. So your carbon here must be in a plus four oxidation state. Uh, here, the sodium's are still plus one, the oxygen's still minus two, but your carbon's still plus four. Uh, here your oxygen is minus 2, your carbon is still plus 4. So there's no change in oxidation state of the carbon. Hydrogen is still plus 1, oxygen is still minus 2. So no change in oxidation state. So in this particular case, this thermal decomposition is uh, not a redox. Uh, precipitation reactions, again, are also not redox processes because there are still ions, basically. So potassium is plus 1, K plus, uh, chloride is minus 1. Silver here is plus one, the oxygen, this is a nitrate ion, it's NO3 minus, with the uh, oxygens being minus two, and your nitrogen must be plus five, uh, because they come to minus six, they'd have to come to plus six to make it neutral overall. Uh, silver still plus one, chloride minus one, plus one, plus five, minus two. So no change in oxidation state. 
Here, this is, a, this is an acid base uh, reaction. Basically, we're taking acidic silicon dioxide, reacting with sodium hydroxide to get uh, this substance here plus water. Your silicon must be plus four because the oxygens are minus two, plus one, minus two, plus one, plus one. Uh, silicon still plus four, minus two, plus one, minus two. Okay, so not that one. So A is your right answer. And then the last one, uh, number 30. So consider the following half equations. You've got iodine uh, being reduced, it's gaining electrons to form iodide, and permanganate being reduced, also gaining electrons to form manganese 2 plus plus water. So which statement is correct for the reaction between permanganate and Ki in acidic solutions? Okay, so we're going to have to reverse one of these equations. Now remember, for the reaction to be feasible, we must end up with a positive combined E cell value. If we flip this one, that's going to become minus 1.51, and that's then going to make the overall thing negative, because minus 1.51 plus 0.54 is going to give us a negative number. So remember, this, the one with the most positive E cell value is your oxidizing agent, basically. So this is going to stay the same, and this is the one that's going to flip. So that would flip. What's going to happen is that I minus is going to form iodine, by losing two electrons, and then this would then become minus 0.54. So our overall value for the cell would be uh, 1.51 minus 0.54, so it would end up as being plus 0.97, is it? So that would be the overall value, so positive, so that's the way it's going to proceed then. That's right. It's not really that important. Uh, okay, so which statement is correct for the reaction between permanganate and Ki? Permanganate reduces iodide to iodine. Uh, well, it is going to turn iodide into iodine, but that's an oxidation. So it oxidizes iodide to iodine. So that one's incorrect. Iodide reduces permanganate to manganese 2 plus. Uh, well, the manganate goes to manganese 2 plus, that's correct, and it gains electrons. It also goes from a plus 7 oxidation state here to a plus 2 there, so a decrease in oxidation number. So that's looking good to me. Uh, the colour changes from brown to purple. Well, no, it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be purple to brown, because we start off with purple permanganate. As that gets used up, it becomes colourless. Uh, we start off with colourless iodine, then becomes brown iodine. And then the permanganate is oxidized to manganese 2 plus. Well, it's not. It's reduced. Okay, because it's the oxidizing agent. So we want to go with B as being the right answer there. Okay. That's that video done, folks.